One, we are now live. We are now live. Welcome, folks, to Question and Answer episode 25. At least I think it's episode 25. Yeah, 25. I'm your ghost. 25! I'm your ghost instead of a host, uh, C.S. Joseph, here with C.S. Jabba. How you doing, Jab? I'm pretty good. Like, I think we need to explain ghost. Like, it's G yeah. host, and the G stands for yeah. something. It's not an actual ghost. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's a great host. <laughs> Everyone thought I was going somewhere else with that. Yep. Anyway, so welcome to Q&A episode <laughs> 25, I think it is. Yeah, 25. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, we actually have how do INTJs compare to INFJs. I know I actually had a lot of people asking me questions about whether they're an INTJ or an INFJ a few days ago. So that was actually a perfect video for them. So make sure you watch that if you want to learn the difference between INTJs and INFJs. Especially if you're having trouble differentiating the two, whether you might be one or the other. So yep. Chase, how are you going? I'm doing good. Uh, so we're changing up the format as per usual, guys. So like if you send a super chat... We're just going to stop what we're doing and then uh, get right into the Super Chats. After Super right. Chats, it's going to be Patreon. So, like, this is, like, number one, and then this is number two, and then this is uh, number three, mm-hmm. and then number four in priority tonight. So, folks, if you don't know, if you want to get your questions in a higher priority, you can join our Discord server and put your question in the... Uh, what channel is it, Jab? Which channel are we using these days? Um, uh, I think there's a questions for C.S. Joseph under the live stream content box. Um, All right. And then the Patreon questions go in the Patreon lounge. And, yeah, I mean, do we have any other announcements? I think we have some good articles coming out. Uh, I think we have an ESTJ article coming out. It's either already come out or it's coming out soon. Um, we also have another good one coming out in a few days, one which I'm personally involved with, and, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you some clues. It talks about the, uh, it talks about basically the reliability of the MBTI test and why it's terrible. And if I can give you a quote, which I've written, it's, uh, <clears throat> so let's see. However, the problem with the reliability test is that reliably wrong data counts as reliable in the Cronbach Alpha method used. So, if you can imagine where this article is going, I think you guys are going to enjoy it a lot, especially if you like a more intellectual article. Um, yeah. Yeah, it'll be talking about the failures of the MBTI test, um, the issues with the dichotomies. Um, it will talk about the reliability data of the dichotomies because it's actually broken down of the reliability of the dichotomies itself. I'll be talking about why some errors are more likely in certain dichotomies, particularly T versus F, they like to mention. And I have a nice quote from Isabel Myers explaining why she thinks that is, which is wrong. And I'm going to tell you why she's wrong. Nice. But yeah, it's, it's going to be all TI critic with some nice... Uh, TE sources to back up that TI critic, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it, especially if you believe the type grid is far better than the MBTI test. And if you don't believe the type grid is better than the MBTI test, you will after reading the article. I promise you that much. Dope. Dope. How's your circadian rhythm, Chase? It's good. It's good. Das ist gut, ja? That's right. That's right. All right, so let's get started. Uh, anything else we need to discuss, or should I just jump right into the questions? Well, we can jump in. Never not jump. Just remember, folks, our priority is Super Chats, Patreon, Discord, and YouTube in those orders. So, yeah. All right. Whew. All right, okay, so we've got uh, some Platinum Q&A questions from Mello, and Mello asks... Could there be, or are there, drugs, namely antidepressants, which could modify the quadra one resides in? Modify the quadra? No. So could you give, like, antidepressants or something to kids and that's going to mess up how they cognitively develop? Yeah, so, Like like, let's look at this quadra. This is the STJ... 
NFP Quadra, mm -hmm. right? And like, okay. So let's see here. So the question is, you know, do drags affect this? Drags? Do drags affect that? The answer is no. Nope. Drugs just nope. cause the transition. Nope. Yeah, it's just, it's transition. So like, if we're gonna do look at a transition, let's look at a transition. Okay, so let's say you have a, uh, we got jab here, you know, and then we got uh, other jab here. We got mini jab. And then we have demonic jab. Demonic jab. And then it's like, okay, do drugs do anything to this? The answer is yes. Yes, yes it does. And because drugs can cause a shift here or here, and in very rare cases here, but does not do a quadra shift. Quadra shifting is completely different. Quadra shift is when you change your ego. Change of ego. And that does not happen with drugs. Uh, changing of ego is usually due to childhood mm -hmm. or it's due to trauma like or other kinds of physical injury so yeah that's how i'd answer that question jeff what's next perfect okay given that the brain stops developing at around 25 what significant does this event pose from a psychological slash type standpoint this primarily involves the prefrontal cortex and what and what's used for rational decisions would this mean type is subject to change up until this point? No. Uh, type is basically uh, determined at this point in time. Puberty. And uh, once you're done with puberty, your type is basically solid. In fact, it's actually midway through uh, puberty, actually, that is decided about that time. Why is that? That's because that's when the super ego itself is grown essentially. And the human being has to contend with a superego that's a lot stronger than it used to be. Is this is this why we see the cliche in society of like parents complaining about their kids becoming teenagers and then getting moody and that's exactly the superego super develop right there. That's exactly why, Jab. That's exactly why. All right. Yep. Perfect. All right. So now we're back to the Patreon. Ooh, we got some nice questions in here from Kana. Is it accurate to say that females with pessimistic SE, for example, INFJs, are more likely to wear makeup than females with optimistic SE, ESFPs? Uh, no, not necessarily at all. Because, for example... Let's look at some SE users, shall we? Let's look at the um, let's look at the NFJ STP Quadra, for example. So we have S E T I F E N I. Oh, look, it's it's Eric Strauss's cognitive functions, uh, and then we have uh, T I S E N I F E. <laughs> then we have F E N I S E T I, and then we have N I F E uh, T I S E. Oh, look. We got all those NIs, you know. You, you guys see this? You, look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Oh yeah! And then it's like, oh okay, hold on. Oh yeah! You know what I'm saying? Look at how those perception functions go, right? Right? And you got you got some little FE here. You got some more little FE here. Okay. Anyway, the point is, these are the four types. Um, so like, okay, what is that? That's the ESTP. This is the ISTP. And then you have the ENFJ. And the INFJ. Now, technically, SE, you have optimistic, which is basically, don't forget, that is hero slash child. And then you have pessimistic, which is the parent slash inferior. So on INFJ women, typically they either go way too far with it due to the insane fear of being rejected or abandoned uh, with SE inferior, uh, and they can like overcompensate and wear too much makeup. But typically, typically, mm -hmm. pessimistics um, actually. So these 
here, and then this funny arrow, they avoid uh, makeup. But honestly, it's very neutral. It's really, right. really neutral. It's not so much determined by type. Now, right. optimistics wear plenty of more, plenty more makeup, for sure, okay. uh, statistically speaking. I see, so it's the opposite of what she suggested. Exactly. I see. I guess that would make sense. I mean, I have pessimistic. The, SD, the, the I... fourth function, even though it's pessimistic, it can aspire and then become right. like overly optimistic through the aspirational uh, aspect. So, mm -hmm. I see. Hmm. That's interesting. All right. Next question comes from Kate, and she asks, why do ENTPs like to wear all black so much? If it's an SE demon thing, then why don't ENFPs do this too? ENFPs do wear black a lot, um, but it really comes down to TI and FE with, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's really just TI plus e, FE and then SI and NE, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, they're go both going in the same direction, so this is actually very normal for SFJ, NTP Quadra, but more specifically, ISFJ and ENTP. Right. have a penchant for black with ENTP being the most. Why is that? There's a lot of theories, but here's my response, whether or not it's like actually true. TI, parent, desires to be so close to the truth, and truth equals light, and light equals fire, and then like we're, we're burned by the light of truth so much that we literally walk around burnt into ashes and that's why we wear a lot of black <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait so you, are you wearing a is that a black shirt or is that like a really dark blue like are you wearing all black today right now this is a really dark blue actually uh, okay this is funny the only thing that's like not black is the microphone which i picked out for you <laughs> nice <laughs> But yeah, anyway, there's nothing wrong with liking black. Nothing wrong. I mean, Chase does always talk about being a gay man. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, how does INTJ superego look like? In which situation will an INTJ turn them turn into its ISFJ superego? Do you want me to take this one? Yeah, go ahead and take that. All right. So an INTJ superego is basically like... Think of it like you become like this embodiment of justice and you will do anything to achieve whatever you perceive justice to be. So this will usually occur if somebody, you know, does wrongs you in a way which you perceive as unjust. And the thing is, it's like the reason why it's demonic in how it does it is because it's almost like a revenge orientated thing. It's like an eye for an eye thing or... It's not even an eye for an eye. It's like my two eyes for one of your eyes because you deserve to lose one of your eyes. It can actually be more self-destructive to itself, provided it gets the damage on the person who they think deserves that damage. So, for example, I've, I've found myself wanting to, you know, sue somebody and, like, even if they, you know, you know, I've been tempted to sue someone over, like, $100, even though it would cost me perhaps over 1000 or two in lawyer's fees or small claims court or whatever. Just on the principle of the fact that, you know, hey, they owe me $100. That's an example of the ISFJ superego. Just an example of, you know, getting that justice you deserve, you feel like you deserve. Based hey, on the, fact that the you audience says you're too loud. Oh, crap. Maybe I moved too close to the microphone. How's that? We'll find out. I'm sure uh, Jonathan Masenga will tell us. Right. So it's, yeah, it's kind of exactly like what I said. It's about getting that justice, but it kind of is like a demonic revenge type of justice where you do more damage to yourself, provided that you could get the appropriate damage on the person who you're trying to get revenge on. Couldn't have said any better myself, Mr. Jab. Right. All right, next question. Um... 
How can I get over SE Nemesis and use my SE Nemesis in a positive way? I get super frustrated and mad at myself and I underperform with st sports. Usually end up having a pre pretty negative attitude when things aren't going my way like during a tennis match. I know a perfect way to use SE Nemesis in a positive way. The answer is very simple. Cleaning. Clean more. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Make <laughs> Was sure it some you... Miyagi Dojo stuff like wax on, wax yeah, off? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly what it is. Make sure you dust, like dust. <laughs> if you don't know how to dust, you're like doing it wrong. If you're SE Nemesis, like wow, what is your issue? If you don't, if you're not cleaning and you're SE Nemesis, then you may be immature. So make sure right. <laughs> you're actually spending time cleaning appropriately. But right. SE Nemesis <laughs> is worried about the. Um, the physical environment right around it so that's really what it comes down to it's just uh yeah also uh studied italian pronunciations uh sure uh no actually i just am not that cool and uh, got lucky on that one uh Wait, what italian Yonatan. pronunciation masenga masenga yep wouldn't it be more like masenga uh, how to make INTPs commit long term? Uh, you have to give them an ultimatum. Ultimatum. Wow. That's it. Got to give them an ultimatum. ultimatum. It's the only way. Wow. It's funny because ENTPs don't like ultimatums. Nope, we don't. I will burn <laughs> the world down over an ultimatum. <laughs> Uh, all right, next question. Kind of related to what you just answered. Um, how can an INTP better get along with an ENFJ mother? Oh, gosh. Uh, run for the hills. <laughs> run. Otherwise, you have to pretend to like be a good person. Um, uh -huh. You have to pretend that people what, what people think of you is more important than anything else. Uh, you have to tell you have to tell your ESFJ mother that how much you want them all the time and you desire to be around them all the time, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you have to be selfish. You have to be as selfish as possible around them. Selfish. Right. Run. I feel like you should cue that. I don't know that cliche soundtrack where it's like run and it's got that beat in the background and usually they'll do pranks to it and whatnot. You should cue that. Yep. Um, given that there are many people becoming interested in psychology now, what would you recommend everybody interested in psych psychology begin with reading first as a foundation so that everyone can start on the same page? Ooh. I would do uh, Dr. John Beebe and his book uh, about psychological type. Energies and patterns of psychological pipe, uh, type. Blah. I see. Hey, we got prehistoric tuna in the house tonight. What's up, bro? And Raka. How you doing, Raka? Yeah, hello, prehistoric tuna. Yep. Yeah, funnily enough, I like tuna. <laughs> wow, Jab. What? I'm gonna make I'm a nice little I'm not gonna make a nice little Jesus fish for for you, Jab. There you go. Alright. I'm talking about the fish. Is that a euphemism for something? No, that's tuna salad that's a euphemism for something. Okay, fair enough. Uh, next question, please. <laughs> All right, next question. Um, let's see. Ooh, we're on to the regular ones now. Which types are most likely to perform loyalty checks to their own detriment? Uh, that would be... Um, hmm. That would be SE Heroes and childs more than anybody optimistic right. se optimistic se users uh those are who which means that would be estp e and tj e and fj yep and esfp there you go yeah we are cool i like tuna isn't that what i said all right next question how can and what makes infps make good and in, good profit and in investment i'm pretty good at it but i want to know what's happening in my head 
and how to make it better if possible. Thanks. ISFPs? No, INFPs. Oh, um... Uh, literally study day trading, actually. Right, because that's all data and TE based. Or Forex, uh, 4X, uh, margin trading. Um, and then, uh, you can also do like standard, uh, flipping on, uh, Amazon or, uh, Craigslist. Yeah, it's just very any, basic. Do you have any ideas on how to make MBTI accepted by the scientific community? Even though that's a YouTube question, I want to quickly answer that. Yeah, by making it credible and fixing up the inaccuracies of the MBTI test, which will be coming out in an article in the next few days. Provide data and analytics that are reproducible. Right. Um, next question. Hey, are we done with the Patreon questions yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we've so actually started the regular questions. So on Discord questions. Don't forget, yeah. folks, if you have a super chat, we will uh, stop what we're doing and answer that question <laughs> as highest priority. Don't forget. Yeah. Hashtag coin operated. Hashtag right. losing energy. No one's giving coins. Somebody, please, coin. He needs more coin. I'm not going to lie. M malfunctioning. Meow. All right, next question. Um, is it especially easy to gaslight, deny someone their own reality, a low SI user? Yes, it's very easy to uh, gaslight um, an SI child or an SI inferior. Hmm. Would an ENFP who was forced into INFJ shadow mode during their teenage years grow up to value SE over SI, seeking objective reality rather than a subjective one? No, the answer is no. Once you mention about temperaments over the world, that Japan is more NT and USA is about SJ, I couldn't find any source of this, and I'm curious about this. Japan is more NJ, not necessarily NT. It's more NJ. NJ for Japan. Well and just because the temperament is more NJ, it doesn't mean there's a larger proportion of NJs. It just means their culture is based around NJ. Temperament-wise, like it could be like obviously like more NT, but it's pretty even between the uh, the NFs and the uh, NTs in terms of the NJs. But it's an NJ society. Right, but when you say NJ, you don't mean that like the largest proportion of type there is NJ. You just mean the culture is built around NJ standards of politeness. Right? Or do you actually mean that the population there's more NJs? Uh, I don't actually mean the population more NJ. It's like a, it's like an overarching uh, motif. Right. So like the culture of like how you accept business cards and how you bow and stuff, that's like more SJ. Right. Right. Um, how would being triple pragmatic NTJs affect someone's personality and how do, would it impact the way they make decisions freedom of choice is top priority that's basically that's basically as it goes uh and, and in fact it gets even be, it gets even deeper so you have people are are less than freedom freedom is more important right. to them than people right not necessarily a wrong thing, because that is the John Galt way. So. Freedom! I'm literally Braveheart let, right now. Let freedom ring. I am literally Braveheart right now. I'm like even wearing the dress and the blue face paint. Next question. All right, next question. Um... Why is... Oh, whoops. How could the color test, gold, orange, green, blue, be helpful in typing someone if someone's primary and... If you know someone's primary and secondary colors, if that could be helpful at all? True colors equals temperament identification. That's all that test is. Temperament identification. Whereas, like, the uh, um, disk system 
is interaction style identification. That's all that is. Jonathan Misenga, how's my life going right now? It is going good. Very That's good. right. All right. Are there differences in sexual compatibility when one is in their shadow versus one is in their ego slash subconscious? Yes. Yes, there I, is. And it, oh, we just got two super chats. But we'll come back to that question. Um, for an INTP that is a teacher and not getting good reviews by students, no matter what he does, what could he possibly do to improve, improve student reviews? Oh, reviews. Focus so on INTP. supporting students and their future and their overall future. You know, I actually had an INTP teacher in high school. Well, I'm fairly confident he's an INTP. Granted, I have SI Demon and I'm basically relying on SI Demon to type him. But he was my physics teacher, and the thing is, nobody liked him because he had a tendency to make the course extraordinarily hard, such that the top mark in the class was like 55%, and then he just put it on a bell curve. But the fact is, people didn't like... The smartest students in the school didn't like coming to his class and getting 55% on the test and topping the class. If that's something that you're doing, I could understand why your students might be mad at you. So, and he was hella informative whenever he talked. Yeah, it, you also have to look at like it from a TE Nemesis point of view, because TE Nemesis, sometimes like it interrupts people failing when, the, when mm. it needs to not do that. It needs to actually allow failure to take place. Because well, and then not, and then offer help afterwards, right? Not well, before. it's not just that, but um, he also had the tendency of being extremely informative and then like expecting the students to fill in the gaps on their own, and you know do self-directed learning. Granted, right. you know this helped me adapt to university a lot easier, but in high school, that's going to piss off your students who have spent the last twelve years of their life getting spoon-fed. If you're teaching final year of high school exactly and it's actually going to lose them to lose motivation in your subjects if they go from you know getting 80 to 90 percent in subjects typically and then they come to your class and then they get 55 percent but they're topping your class now i'm not saying this is what you're doing but you you might be doing a less exaggerated version of this maybe a student who's typically getting 95 to 100 percent in all their classes is getting 82 percent in your class and they can't figure out how to get that last 18 percent when they're a perfectionist and then right. that's gonna piss them off it's gonna discourage them and their grades might even drop even further yep so my advice to you would be a standardized test where you write the test in the your tests in the way where the content wh where basically your students will average around whatever you want the average to be but the average but there should be someone getting close to 100 percent, and there should be people almost failing granted you don't want all your class failing but you should design your tests so that you get a, an intended distribution or at least that's how they did it at university and at the same time Another problem you might have is you might be being overly informative when you teach your classes. Yeah, that's a, that is an issue for uh, INTPs is that they're in a, like, well, it's not necessarily that way because, you know, TI Hero can be actually pretty direct if they're in their element, but they mm -hmm. can't be showing up to class like exhausted or, you know, just like overall uncomfortable enough to do that. Yeah. So I would say... Can you, t your, your volume is pretty loud again. Oh, sorry. I moved close to my microphone again. So I would say when you teach something in class, you need to t approach it from the perspective of you need to balance your informative versus direct. So it's good to bring in some informative to, you know, make people think about it and then just come in with direct and hammer them with your direct hammer. So with your TE nemesis. So start with some informative statements, let them think about it and then hammer them over the head with some TE. 
throw some sources, yeah. throw some facts, throw some figures. Um, yeah, and then bounce back to your TI and, and you know use logic to prove it and whatnot. I think that's the best approach you can do. Yep. Um, Two dollars from Nicholas Brajkovic. When researchers were matching up the vel. Okay, he just wrote a ton of stuff. Da, 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 da. When researchers were matching up the validity of the Young personality test, they had to look at how many people had those characteristics, ENTJs, for example, and looked at how many of those actually had jobs out of the real world as CEOs. They discovered no ENTJs had a high percentage of these careers as far as I'm aware. The only empirical evidence of personality theory being true is the Big Five. Ocean personality test, what are your thoughts on this? Oof. Uh, that research uh, study is completely inaccurate. The reason why is, is because if they are administering tests, if they're administering MBTI tests, uh, then they will automatically fail because the MBTI test is only 40% accurate on average. So if you're out there, if you're watching this channel and you're like, oh, I know my type because I took a test, you're like wrong. You're, you're only, you have, you have a 40% percent chance of only being accurate there so only so 60 percent of you who think that you're typed properly because you took some magical test on the internet somewhere or even the actual mbti test you're basically incorrect that's not right. how it is so as a result so of that, that say again where, where does that where does that number come from that comes from your own data right that comes from our own data sourced from our own discord server that's correct so yeah 40 percent accurate uh, we did the study, and it's like, yeah, like, woohoo, good job, MBTI test. This is why I don't really care for MBTI. It's basically crap. So if you're on this channel right. and you think this is like an MBTI channel, it's not an MBTI channel at all. Right. What this channel is, it is a Jungian channel. <laughs> Jungian depth psychology channel. Yes, focusing on depth psychology. Completely oh. different. And another opportunity to plug the article I have coming up in the next few days. I'll be talking about why the test is crap. And actually the data, I actually referenced data from the peer-reviewed literature, which actually ranges from 50 to 80% inaccurate or 90% wow. inaccurate. Wow. So... Even the Isabel Myers cherry pick tests, which she cites in her sources, are only have a reliability of about 81 or 82%, which is basically the cutoff in the scientific world for when something's reliable. If it's less than 80% reliable, it's wrong. However, I'm going to be discussing the fact that reliably inaccurate data is not reliable. <laughs> yep. And the thing is, the metrics they use to test reliability just require the same answer to come up multiple times. If you for example, if you use this, so if you, let's say you're doing a physics degree or something and you mismemorize a formula, if you incorrectly apply that formula multiple times, you're going to consistently get the same answer. But if the formula is wrong, the answer is always going to be wrong. And just because it's consistently wrong and it's consistently wrong the same way, it doesn't mean it's correct, even with those 80% figures that they give. Agreed. And I'm going to go into more detail. Hashtag why the MBTI test the shit. Preach it, Jab. Preach it from the highest mood. Oh, uh, yay. <sighs> I mean, that's one one way we can celebrate Easter. <laughs> Releasing that article. Yep. Give, pe give people something to uh, talk around dinner table. All right, let's go on to the next question. We've got another super chat from Nat's Ghost. And I think that's a she. I already said thanks. I haven't read BB yet. I'm obsessed with... Oh, okay, yeah. Thanks. I thought it was a question. Thanks for the support. Appreciate it. Coin slot is warming up. Lots of friction. Hmm. All right. So the question we're up to. Are there differences in sexual compatibility when one is in their shadow versus when one is in their ego slash subconscious? An example would be... Yes. ...with SE Child, with INTP, with SI Trickster. Yes. So sexual compatibility, uh, yes. Awesome. Uh, so you have four sides of the mind. You have ego, you have subconscious, you have unconscious, you have your super, etc. cetera. So um, for example, this has its own sexual compatibility. 
this has its own sexual compatibility, this has its own sexual compatibility, and this has its own sexual compatibility. And let's say you get drunk, right? That basically means you've gone from your ego to your unconscious and you have a completely different sexual compatibility, sexual style in the bedroom, etc. So that's basically how to answer that question. If you cognitive transition, you get a completely different uh, sexual style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Next question. Next question. Is it possible to classify the state of mind of psychosis during an episode? If so, how do you do it? Uh, I am not a psychiatrist, so I will not answer that question. Boom. All right, next question. Okay, this person posted a picture of the a cognitive function test that they've taken. And they say, why do I have so much NI as an ENTP? I scored a five with w balanced wings on Enneagram. And then they posted a link. Uh, oh, they posted a picture of a cognitive function test where their NI is highest, their NE is second, their TI is third, their TE is fourth, then their FI is fifth, their FE is sixth, their SE is seventh, tied with their FE actually, and then their SI is last. Is there any chance this person actually might be an INTJ? Uh, I, like my immediate reaction to that is, is that use the type grid. <laughs> like, no, I'm not good. I'm sorry. I'm not going to, uh, dignify that question with an answer because they should not be relying on tests at all. They should be relying on the type grid only. All right. That's why I well, said on the, uh, whiteboard frog out from, uh, something awful.com. Frog out. Fair enough. All right. How does autism and its different levels apply to any different personality types? You're not a psychiatrist, I'm guessing? <laughs> Say again? So this person's asking, how does autism and its different levels apply to any of the different personality types? Could it be that some diagnosis of attention deficit disorder or similar condi condition, uh, conditions are a misdiagnosis due to a variety of different traits of people? I was reading through official manual for diagnosing patients. Answer that question is yes. And that is actually heavily talked about in the first few Q and A, and it's also talked about in a lot of the type comparison episodes involving INTPs. Answer that question, I, yes. I noticed the trend of diagnosing using terminology also used by the MBTI. I think you're talking about the DSM. DSM probably four, or it's up to five now. I don't remember. I don't care. Um, I might be bet that due to human error, people try to clone symptoms, psychological symptoms, on another different level. Just and season misdiagnosis. Yeah, basically. It's basically people misdiagnosing NTPs and NTJs <laughs> as autistic or immoral or having ADD. Right. Or ADHD if they're triple movement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like... Maybe there's nothing wrong with being triple movement and you're just being an asshole? <laughs> yeah. All right. Next question. I, as an INFP, seem to... Okay, yeah. I, as an INFP, seem to be way more extroverted than all the INFPs I know. Why is that? Is it good or bad? Say again. So this person says, I, as an INFP, seem to be way more extroverted than, like all the INFPs I know. Why is that? Is that good or bad? It could be subconscious development or they could actually be an ENFJ. One of the two. If they're subconscious developed, that means they're developing their ESTJ. So. ESTJ. Sorry, ENFJ. Uh, all right, next question. Wow, I'm going through these pretty quickly. Does percentage of preferences like seen in the MBTI test results affect the level of each cognitive function? Which is probably in reality different to your true type, but still a factor. Ooh. Okay, That's can you translate that for me a little bit? So on the MBTI test, where on the two-letter dichotomies, when you take the test, you'll get a percentage between them. Right. 
Do those results affect the development of each level of cognitive function? No, no. Throw it in the dumpster. Get it out. No, percentages. No, we don't talk about percentages here. No, use the type grid, please. God almighty. No, no, don't do that. I, I think this person's trying to ask a nurture question. Oh, really? All right, so I think what this per well, I I'm not sure if this person's trying to ask it, but I'm going to, like, remake a question because he's either asking what you just answered or a different question. And the effect of nurture on the MBTI test affecting those percentages and throwing the results off, is that common? Uh, yes, yeah. that is actually common, yes. For example, ENTPs might test themselves as introverts because of SI inferior. Yep. Because of the perceptions and biases as to what introverted and extroverted means. Yep. All right, we got some super chats in the house. Coin slot is getting nice and warmed up. Nice, the coin slot, coin operated, bro. And getting some good friction, if you know what Ooh, I mean. Wow, friction. All right, as an INTP, I struggle with the TISI loop. I've been working on it by developing new interests. What advice could you give me? TISI loop. Hmm. Okay. Shapiro is an ENTP. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, ERA, develop a knowledge of what other people want, aka develop your expert intuition, or force yourself to have new experiences you've never had before, uh, especially ones that you don't want to have. Yeah, go to Thailand, eat like a spider on a stick. I did do that in Thailand or Indonesia. I have no idea. Uh, that's nasty. Um, and then also <laughs> new experiences, develop self-discipline. It really comes down to developing self-discipline. Uh, that is the way to do it. Yep. So uh, it's really, it really comes down, it's just develop your parent function. Uh, to help develop your parent function, you need to have a lot more experiences than you've never had before. Uh, the other way that you could do it is develop your inferior function and focus on helping others. But when you help others, you actually become more intelligent. So what's the next super chat? How can you be sure you've been typed correctly? Uh, you verify it with the type grid. Um, ben Shapiro is also an ISTJ, folks. We found that out uh, on our how to type stream, just so you guys know. Discussion over. So. OK, next question. Um, how should one comfort an INFJ for their healthy, uh, sorry, their unhealthy use of SE inferior and FI critic when it comes to comforting people who do not appreciate INFJ's attempt to use their inferior effectively? Uh, just tell them that they're uncomfortable. They'll usually back off at that point. Really, <laughs> it, it just comes down to being honest with them. Be honest with how you feel. If you're not honest with how you feel, an INFJ is not going to know anything. They're not going to change. Be honest with how you feel. Mm -hmm. um, what tips do you have for motivating a very intelligent but immature and lazy ENTJ to develop themselves and their relationships? Thanks, Chase. Uh, uh, take them to a fitness conference. Um, yeah. Take them to a fitness right. conference like uh, Fed Expo, etc. Wow, so, something That's like that. Yeah, that'll motivate them real quick. Yeah, because they'll see all these hot chicks walking around. And they're like, "Ooh, I want one." Oh, I'm not good enough for them. Oh, well, now I'm motivated. So, <laughs> is that their only motivation to get a hot chick? <laughs> ENTJ males, they're uh, they're they're pretty uh, they're pretty uh, operated in that way for sure. Yeah. yeah. Tuna salad operated apparently. Provided that person actually is an ENTJ. Now, if they're an INTP, it's completely different. Right. Um. Next question. Obito Uchiha's type from Naruto Shippuden television series. Obito Uchiha. Yeah. I think this person wants to know what his type is. Uchiha Obito. 
What type is he, huh? Yeah, I don't watch Naruto. I couldn't tell you. Don't say Naruto. It's Naruto. <laughs> Naruto. So, uh, yeah, like there's only one orange martial artist I like, and that's Goku. So fuck you. Uchiha Obito is an INTJ. So really. Yep, all about how he feels, all about what he wants, as the inferior, uh, you know, with his, like, mask thing and whatnot. He comes off as, like, very ENTP-ish at times, uh, but remember when he played the part of Toby? Uh, that was complete ESFP subconscious. So, yes, he is definitely an INTJ. There you have it, folks. Okay. Um, why is NI known as willpower? Willpower implies desire and emotion. So isn't intuition just a matter of perception unless it's in a loop with feeling? Ooh. Say that again. So <laughs> why is NI known as willpower? Willpower implies desire and emotion. So isn't intuition just a matter of perception unless it is in a loop with feeling? So uh, intuition is a form of perception. Yes, it is. But what are you perceiving? What is it? What's the object? Or so, so that really an intuition perceives goals, and it could be your goals, yours, or someone else's. Right. And if you have a really strong intuition, you have a really strong perception of those goals. And I all is them. all about your goals, and E is someone else's goals. That's all it is. So intuition, the N equals goal perception. That's all that right. is. And, you know, speaking about the failures of the MBTI test, which I'm writing about, which we have a really good article that I'm going to plug for like the fifth time today. Isn't it funny how like INTJs have NI hero, but they're J types? Isn't that just funny? Isn't that hilarious? Yep. It is hilarious. This is why the socionics lettering system is still technically superior to the MBTI lettering system. But we only use the MBTI lettering system here because it's better SEO. And for no right. other reason. <laughs> and isn't it funny that like NTPs have NE hero or parent and you know which is a judging function, but they're perceivers? Isn't that isn't that hilarious? I I wonder why there's so much inaccuracy on the MBTI test. Hmm. Hmm. And if you can't hear that, I'm like rapidly stroking the hair on my chin. Uh, nice. I well, too technically will... it's only stubble. Stubble? Okay, well. I need to Not shave Not quite anyway. a neck beard yet. Not quite, huh? Not quite a neck beard. I can be if I want to, but not quite. All right, let's go on to the next question. <laughs> next question. All right. Let's see if I let's see how many times I can plug my article <laughs> this episode. Nice. <laughs> As an INFJ, how can I combat my FI critic? Okay. Uh, make yourself useful. Speaking of FI critic, no, I'm just kidding. Make yourself yeah. useful. Yeah. It's I mean, FI critic that simple. is is all about you critiquing yourself whether you think you're a good person or not so why not actually make yourself a good person so you don't have to worry about it <laughs> all right so chris 999 so like just because someone states that they think they know their type doesn't make them correct either like how does that person have more credibility if they state what their own type is like how, like explain that to me like how is that even a thing it's not a thing because a lot of people don't know themselves he never used the type grid, for example. He doesn't know. He's an ISTJ, and that's that. Uh, let me uh, let me let me let me quote what he said. I think he said something along the lines of, uh, "Hey guys, uh, I'm Ben Shapiro, and I, I I think I took the MBTI test once, and I got like E something T J. I don't remember though." And just because J.K. Rowling got it right also doesn't give it more credibility either. Like. Like, a, a broken clock is right twice a day. Sorry. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, people are referencing the fact that Ben Shapiro said he got E-something TJ on a test as evidence as to why he's not an ISTJ. Yeah, I think that's hilarious. That's hilarious when to me. I get to plug my article for a sixth time. I mean, if, we... If you haven't figured it out right now, I think we hate the MBTI test and we think it's shit, and I'm going to prove to you why it's shit. 
Or there's somebody known as Eric Strauss uh, who thinks he's an ENTP <laughs> when in reality he's an ESTP. And like, for example, like, okay, great. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You guys are MBTI. Cool, totally. All right, totally, we got another totally chat. MBTI. We we have MBTI tests here. Yeah, we have MBTI tests. Yeah. Um, can identical extroverted functions, example FE and FE, gain energy from one another after they pull energy from the introverted functions? Example: high FI user in a room full of FE users. So for Marky Mark, uh, the answer to that question is is that they just drain each other. That's all it is. They right, so they other. can interact with each other, but they just drain each other. Yep, they emotionally drain each other. So, yeah, that's simple. All right, next question. Thank you for the 999, by the way, champ. Uh, what were we up to? What do you think about different subtypes and types? I'm not talking about full size of the mind, but types using their parent function so it becomes a second hero. And f so, for example, ISFP becoming more ESFP because they develop their SE so much. Just an example. No, that's not accurate. And uh, no, nope. That's not how that works. It's almost no. like someone saying that there's an ENTPA or like an ENTPT. Uh, this too is a lie. That's not true. And I'll be doing an episode very soon in season 17 or 18 debunking that. There is no such thing as assertive versus turbulent. No such thing. And there's a reason why. It's called cognitive transitions as well as um, cognitive um, development. So between who is mature and who is immature. It's that simple. All right, hmm. what's next? All right, um, next question. Is it possible to be an FI hero user but not understand your feelings very well? Um, no, no, it's not. Uh, and SP, hello, SP, I see your question there. So you're asking for, uh, I believe that's either third or fourth highest uh, social compatibility relationships. Uh, so in the relationship, so let's, for example, I had that relationship ENTP plus ESFP. And uh, this is known as an enigma relationship according to socionics. And let me tell you exactly how it goes. It was cancer and it can be really difficult. Why is that? Well, because both are starters, for example, they have the same interaction style, right? But uh, who could finish? Nobody, nobody could finish. And it's just literally chaos everywhere, all over the place. So is that a, is that a good relationship? Sure, they have decent compatibility but I'd still rather have someone who is less, I'd rather have someone who is less emotionally compatible and more sexually compatible than that relationship any day of the week. For example, that would be like um, an INTJ ENFP relationship. Next question. Okay. Um. Examples of INTJ and ISFJ demon. I guess we already discussed that. Yes, let's get that. We already discussed that. Um, I can't find my question on here. I had a question for... Okay, well... That's not really a question. What does depression do to the mind? Shadow transition. Right? Say again? What does depression do to the mind? And then I sung shadow transition. Depression. Well, yeah, it's it, it it is kind of a shadow transition. So, for example, ego, sub, uh, unconscious, aka the shadow and the super ego. Depression basically just does this to the mind, and you get stuck in your unconscious. Right. I mean, because depression is effect is effectively your needs not being met, and when your needs aren't being met, you cognitively transition into your shadow so that you have access to other cognitive functions to solve the problem. 
Right. And that's literally how it works. So yeah, you do shadow transition. Uh, Aiden Washness uh, sent one dollar and ninety nine and said Patreon question mark. I think he might have asked another Patreon question. Oh okay, yeah we can. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, he didn't actually ask one earlier, so I'm going to jump back to Platinum Q&A just to Go answer this question. Yeah, 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 we can do that. Um, all right, Mr. Aiden W., if the ENTP is the most introverted of the extra, which is the most extroverted of the intro... Which is the most extroverted of the extroverts and vice versa? Who is the most extroverted of the introverts, and what about introverted of the introverts? Okay, so he's asking, who are the most extroverted extroverts, who are the most introverted introverts, and who are the most... Extroverted introverts. All right. The answer to that question is, so ENTP is the most introverted of the extroverts. INFJ is the most extroverted of the introverts. Hands down. INFJ mm -hmm. is. Hands down. We've in fact, seen that's even in one of the articles we wrote about them. It is actually in one of the articles. Which yeah, article is that? Yeah, I can plug an article again. Yeah, let's link that. Let's link that to the chat. Let's link that to the chat. I yeah, I'll go get that really quickly. Uh, yeah. CS... Let me just uh, say uh, what I'm doing out loud. I'm going to CS Joseph's life, and I'm clicking the blog section. While we're doing that, I'm going to answer Nat Ghost's question and INTPs uh, for sexual compatibility. Who are they most sexually compatible with? The answer is... Do we know? Do we know? Who knows? Who knows the answer to this question? Who knows the answer to this question? The answer is ENTJs. Yes, for INTPs. That is the answer. There you go. And then we have uh, you do it to develop your demon. Actually, you have to uh, remember back to ego, subconscious, unconscious. In order to develop your ego, you need to develop or your super ego. You have to develop those three first in order to get to the super ego. So you have to go this way and this way simultaneously to get there you cannot you cannot go this way it will turn rainbowy bad for you so be careful not good right and i just posted the link uh it's called 10 signs you're an infj it's an article on csjoseph.life hashtag uh, sell out uh, buy out buy our merchandise um <laughs> Even though I'm not sure we have any merchandise, but we do have the bookstore where we get affiliate links. Yep. Jab um, is coin operated this evening, folks. Very coin operated. I'm coin operated every every, every minute. Evening. Every every, every minute, second. Every day. Like. Every day. Oh, that's right. He is. You know, I think next meetup, I'm gonna have to like bring a shirt with a coin slot in it and just tell people to bring their coins. Yeah, I I yeah, exactly. I, you know what? I know exactly what's going to happen too. Like, you're going to have so many Chuck E. Cheese tokens afterwards that you don't even have to like go in and buy a pizza. You just walk right in and go right to the prize center, and you're good to go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um. All right. So, what are we up to? Ah, oh, so did you answer his question? Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, the answer is INFJ. INFJ. Uh, who's the most extroverted extrovert? The most extroverted extrovert? Oh, gosh. Um, I would probably have to say ENTJ. Um, it's probably the most yeah. extroverted extrovert. Yeah. SE Child? SE Child, yep. If so not, if not, if in. not that, I could also make an argument for ENFJ. And it probably is ENFJ, but it can it can change by gender though. So right, there's differences in gender on that one. Fair enough. What about the most uh, introverted introvert? What's that like an INTP or something? Uh, actually INFP. Really? Yeah, it'd be INFP. Um, I thought it would be one of the two. Hey, we got a super chat. Yeah, we do. Okay, thank you for the $10. Oh, we got another one on top of that. All right, so let's start with the $10 one, because that came first. All right, $10 from Chris Wen, and he asks, I broke up with my ex-girlfriend, ENFJ, a few years ago, and I'm an INFP. I realize now breaking up was a mistake. Okay. All 
All right, I'm back. Sorry, it just kicked me out of the... Uh, so uh, what's the rest of his uh, question? So he broke up with his ex-girlfriend, who's an yep. ENFJ, and he's an INFP, and he real- yep. realizes breaking up was a mistake, and he's going to be meeting up with her soon. What can he say to get her back? Uh, yeah, so pretty good. Um, okay, so you can make the following statements. Uh, I feel good about you. Um, uh, uh, I am still loyal to you. Uh, uh, what else? Um, uh I feel good about you. I'm still loyal to you. I regret. Um, uh, regret. Yep. Not that's an SI thing. Not being uh, with you. That's another good one to do it. Um, here's a big one. I miss you. Oof. That's a really big one. Um, still loyal to you. I regret not being with you. I miss you. Um, uh, you make me. Uh, feel good, you make me comfortable. Feel comfy, yes, comfortable. Yep, this is all really good examples right there of things you well, can say. I mean, they're cliche social engineering statements to make, but I think realistically, with the problem you have, there's probably a reason why you broke up with her, and there's probably an underlying issue that you're going to need to resolve before she's going to feel like she could work in a relationship with you. Um, yep. You gotta solve the nurture issue. Don't forget nurture, folks. It's right. a problem. So, you're gonna need to figure out a way to. Well, it, it's actually a lot more complicated than that, and it's probably not something we could answer in a few minutes on a sure Q&A. it is. All he has to do. Well, we're gonna try. We're gonna Chris try. Wen, Chris Wen, I know exactly what you need to do. All you have to do is go to our YouTube channel, okay? Literally, go to the YouTube channel. And then you click on playlists, okay? And then you go to the seasons, and you need to watch the following seasons in order. Has to be in order. (laughs) Seasons four, six, and 13. And that will give you everything you need to know to be ready for that conversation uh, with that woman. Yeah, I recommend you watch them on uh, two times speed so you can get through them faster, or maybe one and a half times. One and a half times speed, for sure. Save time. I don't know about you, but whenever I watched university lectures when I was at university, two times speed all the way. Never not two times speed, Mr. Jab. It was a a pain in the ass when you're doing highly complicated engineering calculations and you've got this really fast lecture that's just going, and then I put it two times speed, so I go, literally chipmunk speed. So what's next? What is next? Uh... Okay, so I've got to go back. All right, I'm going to go back through the Patreon questions again. So we did the Platinum. Let's go through the regular. Kana asks, The mighty CS Jabber recently mentioned in a How to Type stream. A joke that has been made seemed like SI humor. What's the difference between SI and SE humor? SI and SE humor. Ooh, that's a great question. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We had a $5 patron that I almost forgot. So let's come back to that. Is it possible for an ISTP to not finish many of their projects and ideas? Is it possible for an INTP to not finish their project and ideas? Yes, if helping others interrupts. Um, or if uh, they find that what they're doing is not desired by anyone around them or anyone that they remotely respect. And if that's consistent, they're not going to be able to get any projects done. The only other thing is that they could be distracted by more delights that their SI child likes to do. And I'm just going to play video games for like 20 hours straight because that (laughs) is the experience because I'm dopamine addicted. And that's what I want to do. So obviously, I'm not going to get anything done and be productive because I'm addicted because INTPs are insanely addictive. So. Mm -hmm. Wait, ISTPs or INTPs? Uh, INTPs. Uh, the guy asked, is it possible for ISTPs to not finish many of their projects and ideas? Uh, yeah, because if they think that it's stupid after they start, they first working on it and they realize that they found themselves in a dead end, they're going to scrap the project and move on to the next thing. They're not going to waste their time. Right. Uh, the, the more they develop their thinking as a result of helping other people, the more intelligent they become over time, that is going to lend them to being able to finish more projects because they're more on point. 
the less experience, yeah. the less knowledge they have, they're not as on point, so they're going to not finish as many projects because they're going to realize that it's a waste of time. They're going to move on to the next thing. Okay, so yeah, let's go back to the Kana question now on the SI versus SE humor. So SI humor is sarcasm based. SE humor is more comedy jokes or mocking. Basically, right. it's a uh, it's amusement uh, without thought, whereas sarcasm okay. actually is very much with thought. So I see. Let's not forget that she called me mighty there. Thank you for the compliment. The mighty yep, Jabba. The the, the the mighty the the mighty Jabba exactly. I too am a giant uh, slug. Yes. Yep. All right, next question comes oh, from Kate. Oh, oh, he oh. asks, why would it... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right, I'm going to ask this question as Jabba the Hutt really quickly then, since you made me. Actually, no, I can't. Fuck that. Why would it be <laughs> that an ETP finds that they don't enjoy most films and only like a couple of small subgenres of films? Because of SI Inferior! Yeah, exactly. It's Look at me, I have SA Inferior. I want to experience the same experience over and over again, so I'm going to find a genre which I find co uh, comfortable or a specific series of show which I find comfortable, and I'm going to rewatch it over and over and over. Yep. <laughs> All right. Do you have any theories on how Game of Thrones will end, and what are they? Oh, oh you know, yeah. That would be big if we did predict it. All right. Um, let, let, let's get inside George R. R. Martin's mind. So he's an INFP. So he's like N.E. the crap out of all his characters. I know exactly. Here's here's my uh, here's my prediction. Um, so also we have C.S. Jabba on the stream. I uh, drew C.S. Jabba. Uh, so uh, here's what I think is going to happen. Um, uh, Tyrion. Uh, is a, a Targaryen, and uh, and he will be married to Sansa uh, Stark, and uh, and Tyrion will sit on the Iron Throne if the Iron Throne still actually exists, because it may not actually exist afterwards. And if the Iron Throne does not exist, Tyrion will become basically king in the North, uh, and that is my king crazy. In the north. That is my crazy prediction <laughs> for for Game of Thrones at the end. Uh, yes. Oh, yep. Well, I think it's a little bit more complicated than that. And okay. That All right, Jeff. All right, Jeff. It. Go for it. That actually might be it. But you got to keep in mind, George R. R. Martin. You know, he's he's got like that SI humor, so it's very sarcastic, and sarcastic is full of irony. Oh yes, very ironic. Thank you, George R. R. Martin. It reminds me of this guy by the name of Kay Weissman in Syndicate <laughs> Enterprise in Test Alliance. Please ignore. Also, Vince oh, Draken is basically cancer. Yes, thank you. Yep. Um, what I was going to say is, you just ruined my train of thought. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, Game of Thrones theory, man. Tyrion, come on, come on, come on. I was going to say that I think that the thing about the mythology of Azor High and whatnot is that it's the story is Lightbringer comes from him sticking it in the love of his life. Now I've seen people say it's Melisandre, but if that's not the case, can you imagine like the moral crap Jon Snow would have to go through if he had to stick light claw into Daenerys's heart to produce a weapon that's capable of killing the Night King. He literally has to kill the love of his life to kill the Night King. And they talk about a bittersweet ending, ending so you know one of them's gonna die. Yeah. One of them's gonna die. And I think Jon is gonna have to kill Daenerys in order to produce the Lightbringer so that he can kill um, the Night King. Unless his sword is actually like genitalia, and that's like a sexual <laughs> oh reference. My God. <laughs> <laughs> what is he gonna? What is this like? An episode of South Park? He's like, oh my, oh my god! Oh my god! He turns it to Mister Garrison, and he's like campaigning to become king of the North, saying he's gonna fuck everyone and build a wall. Ah, <laughs> oh. but yeah, if that's the case, I could see him maybe even killing himself after killing Daenerys 
and then that would leave the Seven Kingdoms without a king, which I guess maybe you'd be right about Tyrion taking over. Or after that, uh, he becomes the new Night King because Arthas, because derived, because King in the North, LOL. And then he becomes the new Night King, basically, and takes the dead up north because someone's got to control the dead or else the dead will just run rampant, apparently. And while that happens, Tyrion is uh, a Targaryen, Daenerys is dead, and uh, ends up sitting on the Iron Throne, uh, continuing on the Targaryen family name, along with his wife, Sansa Stark. LOL. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but the difference is... George R. R. Martin specifically wrote his text, especially with Jon Snow, so that it could come out he's a Targaryen. There's okay, no uh, okay, that. okay, okay. Let's save this for the Game of Thrones episode, okay? We have super chats. Back on track, bro. <laughs> all right, back on track. All right, all right. So not Charon. I killed lots of Charons in EVE Online, actually. What types have the hardest slash easiest time developing? Uh, depends on where you're at. Uh, if you're in the United States of America, that is SJ's. Um, if you are in Japan, that is NJ's. If you're in, uh, like, Africa, then that's SP's. So, that just depends on location. Actually, Next super chat. How does secondary virtue and vice, sincerity versus insincerity, show up in INTJ's? Ooh, that's a great question. Whoever asked that question, that's dope. That's very dope. So, uh... Um... Okay. So, by the way, I think like, I think uh, I just want to state this real quick on the whiteboard here. Um, so, I'm sure people will get a kick out of that. All right. Uh, so, wow. What was that question again? How does secondary virtual advice? Right. Secondary virtual advice with it with my NTJ. Yeah, so INTJs, they can wear masks too. Uh, they kind of have to. Like, for example, like in a professional setting, uh, the INTJ uh, knows that they commit social faux pas and to protect themselves from their effie trickster committing social faux pas, they have to be insincere with people and like be professional, professional in air quotes, which basically uh, from a professional standpoint, it's really a mask basically. And they're not really their true selves because they know that they're extremely off-putting other people with their true selves essentially. Mm -hmm. And that's how the secondary virtue and vice uh, manifests in INTJs. That's just one example. Uh, it can also manifest when they're dealing with family as well. Okay. Um, what type is most likely to be sexually dominant, especially females? SE. Yeah, SE is a dominant. SI, uh, more submissive. Yep. Uh, well, SE optimistic, SE SE pessimistic can actually be more sexually submissive, for example, which means uh, ISFPs and ISTPs, uh, for example, and a lot of people don't know this, uh, they prefer others to initiate, usually. Right. Well, that's the thing, you know, it's actually a cliche in... Um... It's a cliche in uh, our discussion of type that usually SE women like to go on top. Yes, but it is. But but it yeah, it just, it just depends. But it's usually like SE uh, optimistics do. So, right. And even All SI right, optimistics question. do as well in some cases. Yeah, go for it. Um, are you familiar with Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences theory? And if so, do you think particular types of intelligence correspond to particular Jung types? I am not current on that theory. Uh, give me a book to read, and I will read it, and I will understand that theory. All right. PM me a book, Mr. D.F. Campbell. Uh, Byte asks, which Star Wars character do you think is an INFJ? Uh, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> now that we're on the subject of Star Wars, I will now share my Star Wars theory. Nice. Okay. So, what exactly is happening in Star Wars? So there's two there's two things. Uh, so um, Han Solo uh, got with uh, Daenerys Targaryen. <coughs> I mean uh, Kira, um, and then they had uh, they had Rey. Okay, that's theory number one. 
If you don't know, you should watch the Solo film, which is arguably the most important Star Wars film uh, currently released and is most pivotal to the story. Han Solo plus Kira equals Rey. And that basically explains why he broke up with Leia. And that's why uh, his son uh, has a problem with him because he's like, wow, you like literally screwed some other chick and ha had like a, a potential um, half sister. So in the same way that Luke and Leia were brother and sister, we're going to find out that Rey is half sister to Kylo Ren. Uh, you heard it here, folks. Um, and let's say, let's say for some reason that that is absolutely categorically false, which I disagree that it is false because I think that's actually what it is. You could also say that uh, Palpatine um, uh, basically uh, DNA genetically test tube baby uh, uh, Ray, and um, and that's why in the uh, the dark side hole in uh, in uh, Last Jedi uh, basically showed uh, no parents. Uh, in the uh, mirror, basically. Um, so that's my other theory. But quite honestly, I'm going with theory number one on this one, for sure. Uh, Han Solo definitely got with uh, Kira after she came back uh, at the fall of the Empire. And he had already had a child with Leia at that point in time. And then it's like, oh, well, I got involved with Crimson Dawn and I rescued my former, uh, my former girlfriend. And yeah, just so you know, because I'm a sensual ISTP, I just happened to get with her on the side without telling anybody. And she bared a child, which would explain why the Millennium Falcon is on Jakku, along other things. Um, so gotta, gotta love that. Gotta, gotta love that. So, so yeah, I just won Star Wars and you're welcome. Uh, next question. <laughs> it's like you literally just spoil it the whole show. That's right. Um, yep. Well, uh, is there a female INFJ? Because I think maybe she wants a INFJ Star Wars character for her avatar. Maybe that's why she's asking. Oh, oh, uh, a female INFJ character. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. You could actually state that Kira might be, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look into it a little bit more. Right. For sure. All right, next one. How can an INTP find an ENTJ partner? This comes from Rami Bakri. How can an INTP find an ENTJ partner? Uh, I can tell you, uh, and if this is coming from a man, you want uh, less than 15% body fat. <laughs> yep. And uh, you are a gym rat at that point. Uh, yes, and I guarantee you an ENTJ woman will find you and quickly. So, yep, that's it. That's like the okay. fastest way. That, that's, that is the fastest way to get an ENTJ woman <laughs> is to be a fit INTP, which very few of those actually exist, very few, and, uh, and be a regular at a gym. And uh, the ENTJ woman will find you and will initiate with you, whether you like it or not. So, okay. Um, ooh, we got one more patron typing a question. Oh, never mind. Apparently not. Let's just jump back to some regular questions. Double check the super chats just in case. I did. All right, cool. That was the last super chat, the INTP ENTJ one. Um, okay, live stream discussion. Oops, wrong chat, wrong chat. Boom. We already answered what depression does to the mind. How can I have a more compatible relationship as an INFJ with an ISFJ girl? Uh, you can't uh, get away from that. <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> Yeah, that's just not going to work. Like you have zero emotional compatibility. You barely have any sexual compatibility. Don't even bother. Run from that relationship. Run, run, run. I am so tired of hearing about NFJs getting with SFJs. It is so unwise. Do not do it. It's like, especially like when you try to be like super mega sexual with them in the bedroom, the SFJ will just laugh at you because you try to go like super deep and like super metaphysical and like, and super mega passionate and then just laugh at you or they'll be too scared to actually do it with you. So, and it's like, it's like sexual light uh, to the INFJ. Don't even waste your time. All right. We got an interesting question. I couldn't think of a better 
gr couple of people to ask this question too, but I think you're going to need to give us a bit more context. So this guy called Cured Caviaring asks, my ENTP girlfriend left me and I'm an INTJ male. How do I get back in her good graces quick? Is it normal for her to completely recoil? It depends on what you did. Yeah, it really depends what you did. ISFJ subconscious might be like, mm, I need justice and I'm going to like slam the shit out of you. And right. then, like, ESFP Super Ego is like, I'm going to catch you with a knife. <laughs> so, realistically, it depends on what you did. Um, chances are, if you... Did you loyalty checker up... or what? Like, what? Like give, like, give us some more, uh, some context on that, please. The thing is, if she felt justified in breaking up with you, she's probably already dated guys. Because ENTPs, if they feel like they're justified in leaving you. They move on hella quick. Hella super hella quick. quick. Yep, super quick. Like like following day, quick. <laughs> <laughs> More like uh They don't waste time. They're on um what's that app called? They're on Tinder, like swiping right as they're walking out the door with their suitcase. Exactly. <laughs> exactly it's so true not even wasting any time and, it, and it's funny because like you know people are like oh you move on too fast or it's like it's like those nj's expect you know like that enps for example are going to be heartbroken for like six months before they actually like st you know start dating again <laughs> like that never happens <laughs> no <laughs> okay so he said he talked to another girl when she was completely ignoring him for weeks she said she doesn't want another relationship. Okay. So, like, well, how did you talk to another girl? Did you, like, flirt with her? Or was you, like, friends with another girl and she got jealous? Like, what happened? She found Tinder on my phone and got pissed. Ooh, yeah. I would, uh, <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I saw that, uh, yeah, that would be insta-dumpster time for the INTJ. Insta-dumpster. Okay. Were you using Tinder? Or was it just there because you didn't delete it because you're... Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they were using it or not. Like, it <laughs> doesn't matter. Then again, the ENTP should have been smart enough to put up boundaries. This is why we put up boundaries, folks. If you don't know much about boundaries, you need to watch Season 6 Playlist. Figure that out, folks. You need to understand <laughs> boundaries. Set your boundaries. Yeah. Like... The problem is, as an SI user, if they've perceived you to cheat on them, that, that's like met, that's like etched into their memory now. And yeah, SE demon, it's fucked. like permanent. That's like permanent, and it's like, oh, you cheated on me. Well, that basically means that ten years, it. ten years from now, uh, when you don't expect it, I'm gonna take full revenge <laughs> on you, and you're never even gonna know. Yep. Because, folks, when you screw over an ENTP, they never forget, and they will plot against you, and revenge is a dish best served cold, and when you think you got it all going on, they're going to show up randomly, Count of Monte Cristo style, uh, ten years later, and completely and absolutely screw you over, and then you're left with nothing. The SE demon will burn your reality to the ground, and if you're not careful... That's like what you will happen because the ENTP literally has tattooed all over their body. You reap what you sow. So, so well when it comes to ENTPs. Okay. All right, let, let's try and help him out. I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt and assume that he never actually used it and it was just on his phone from before the relationship and he just never deleted it. All right. So, let's do that. Benefit if of that's outside. the case, if that's the case, Huh. Well, what would I do? What would Jab do? First of all, I think you need to not only apologize, but accept that you're an idiot in having it on your phone and that you just never thought about it because you are so... Here's what you can say. You were so happy in being in a relationship with her that you completely forgot about the concept of going into relationships and you just forgot to delete it off your phone or something like that. Nope. Nope. Here's no. what I would say. Um, no. 
go up to her, admit everything you did wrong completely. Don't try to twist it whatsoever. Do it complete face value. Tell the truth, uh, and then, and then ask, "What could have I done better?" Because even though you may not be interested in a relationship with me ever again, I would like to have constructive criticism so that I could have a better relationship in the future. That's how you do it. <laughs> okay. What would Jab do to get back with Chase after Chase? <laughs> All right. What's 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 the next question? Oh, someone asked in the YouTube chat, what would Jab do to get back with Chase after cheating? Uh, he would do the, exactly that. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I would just apologize, and I'd say um, when I went to the toilet, I didn't see that there was a person between me and the toilet seat, and it was an accident. It's a total accident. <laughs> I just so happened to sit down and, you know... Someone just so happened to be there, and I didn't see them. <laughs> and I have a SI demon, so like I was completely blind to the experience. <laughs> next question. All right, let's go to the next question. Uh, where are we? Questions for Cedar Stewart. <laughs> I'm an INFJ. How can I actively get my subconscious ESTP in any given situation? In some situations, I want to extrovert, but I feel stuck in introvert mode. All right. Uh, stop making decisions based on how you feel. Uh, make decisions based on facts. If it's necessary for you to be in ESTP mode, then go into ESTP mode. You need remember the INFJ's purpose is to strengthen other people, right? Uh, it is to make people better and to improve them. So if it's necessary for you to do so, then do so. Um, okay. Next question. Yep. Uh, I'm an ENFP. Have any suggestions helping me cope with work anxiety? I'm a social media manager and I find it, I find I really struggle responding to pressure from my boss. Uh, the thing is, though, SI inferiors as an ENTP or ENFP, uh, we do our best work with a gun to our head. It's something that you kind of need to get used to. The problem is, though, is you have FI parents, so you just don't feel good about it, and I'm just not in the mood, but you need to, like, get in the mood. Like, seriously, get in the mood. Now, right. here's the thing, though. There needs to be some kind of credibility that you gain from the work environment. You need to get some kind of credential or some kind of reward uh, that helps boost your status or your reputation so that you stay motivated. And that's typically how to motivate uh, or, or even like some kind of monetary reward. That's how you motivate ENFPs basically uh, with those kinds of bonuses and uh, incentives. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. Next question. Um, how to distinguish between ENTP stuck in INTJ shadow and INTJ stuck in ENTP shadow? Um, the a ENTJ, video is, yeah, there is a video on that. The yeah, the EN, the ENTP uh, stuck in INTJ shadow is very worried about their own future, and they can actually become really, really selfish as a result of that. Uh, and then the uh, INTJ stuck in ENTP shadow, they're just super mega paranoid. Um, right. And the ENTP stuck in INTJ shadow is also insanely distrustful. Not necessarily paranoid, but it's like they, 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 the SE demon demands immediate loyalty from people. That's another way. Okay. Even if it's not earned. Oof. Um, where are the most likely places I'm most likely to run into each type? That's a well, too big actually, of a question to answer, so pick one. Uh, I'll, I'll just briefly answer this. Some of the research I was doing on like the accuracy of MBTI types and whether things are and whatnot, I think at universities in research, you actually find, I think 18% was INTJs. I might have actually have the article here somewhere. Like, so if you're looking for academia, ITJs, you'll find hmm. TE users. So TE users in academia, um, sports, you'll find SE users, right? Uh, mm -hmm. 
academia also includes libraries and whatnot. Uh, the gym is also like SE users as well. Um, you can find some SI users. Uh, anything like sensually fun, you know, like movies and media, those kinds of things, uh, you'll find like SI users, etc. So it's just it's just it's just different in that in that regard as it goes through it. Uh, you can find like FI slash FE users and volunteering. So it's just, it, it, they're all different uh, media, but then there's also like uh, civics as well, civic duty. You'll find SI users involved in that. So, and they all kind of mix together depending on what functions they have. Here's a, there's a nice TE source on the live just. Uh, live stream discussion channel on the Discord. I just po uh, posted something. The MBTI personality type distribution of academics. Now, granted, we know the MBTI test is crap, but crap. complete. It's still crap. something. I'd say I'd say it's pretty accurate because it says ENTJs are six percent, ESTJs are twenty percent, INTJs are eighteen point four percent, ISTJs are twenty point nine percent. Um, and then it says like ESTP is a 0.9 percent, ESFP is a 1.7 percent, right? INTPs are only 1.3 percent, which is I I'd expect that to be a little bit higher. Hmm. INFJs are 1.3 percent, ISFJs are 4.7 percent, ISTPs are 6 percent, ISFPs are 0 0.4 percent, INFPs right. are 2.1 percent. I mean, the numbers seem a bit typical. Some of them seem a bit lower. Like, I'd expect INTPs to be a little bit higher, but at the same time, INTPs usually get, like, driven out because... Right. Their perceptions. Right. Yeah. Anyway, right. let's go on to the next question. Yeah, the next question. How many more questions do you reckon we should do? Probably, like, two or three more. All right, all right. We're... In early March right now, so we're about a month behind on questions. So that's not a bad turnaround. Um, hey, dude, why is America considered an SJ society, not an F? If not, give me an example. Didn't you already answer that? Yeah, I've already answered that question. Okay. ESFJ mail here. How is it that an ESFJ doesn't know what they want when they clearly have desires for things? For example, favorite foods, favorite cars, favorite colors, males and female attraction, desire, personal goals and ambition. As a man, is it it is required that I have goals and be independent? Four pillars of self intimacy. Yeah, but it's the difference between SI desire versus NI desire. So SI desire is, and then you have NI desire, right? Okay, it's what someone wants, whereas SI desire is actually attached to what others want, but it's also more of like, what what experience can I receive? What taste can I have? Or uh, what food can I eat? Or, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Or how comfortable am I going to feel? Uh, is, that, is, that, uh, is that soft? You know, like those kinds of things. Uh, whereas it's uh, wants, goals, etc. And that's kind of like the difference between uh, NI and SI desire. So yeah, that's how I'd answer that question, Jeff. Okay. Um, next question comes from Jenna and she asks, incredible emoji. I'm such a slave for you, lol. As a starter type, it's so hard for me finishing anything, but I hang on to every single word you say in your videos. So grateful for your brains. So my question is, how can an ISTJ realize he has been made to feel good and given a good experience, let's say by a woman, who he shouldn't be with? Not really compatible with, but she keeps stroking his ego and child. How does he come to realize it's not a good choice? Second question, can an ENFP married to an ISTJ be pushed into their... Iron okay, let's start with the first one first. So... so they're very weak against being social engineered that way when their self-importance is being appealed to. Uh, so be really careful with that. Uh, they Basically, they're being manipulated and they don't even know. I'd recommend watching the season 21 episode, How to Social Engineer ISTJs, to try to uh, come up with the opposite of the social engineering te techniques to break them out of it. But otherwise, uh, make them feel less self-important or show them how that person is destroying their reputation 
also uh, show them how why they shouldn't be loyal to that person because they'd have to feel unwanted. So if they're unwanted, then they can be disloyal. Unwantedness leads to disloyalty in SI users. Never forget that. So if you want to create disloyalty, show them how unwanted they actually are. Okay. Perfect. And she, the second part of that question is, can an ENFP married to an ISTJ be pushed into their INFJ shadow for years to compensate for the incompatibility? And when that happens, are they now compatible? Yes, that can happen. No, they are still incompatible. Okay, so INFJ is fourth incompatibility for the ISTJ. That's emotional compatibility. Yep. I mean, realistically, if you... <laughs> the problem with emotional compatible relationships in, three and, in the three and four slot is they lack sexual compatibility, so as long as you are okay in the bedroom, that relationship can still work. Yep. Alright, we got another chat. I have a friend who doubts she's INTJ because she doesn't feel as if she knows what she wants in the long term. Is this a point against her being an INTJ? Uh, it can be, but uh, sometimes they don't know what they want because they're too busy. Like it could be like midlife crisis, for example. INTJ midlife crisis happens when ESFP subconscious is not developed enough. ESFP subconscious is demanding uh, more and more shared experiences. It's not getting those shared experiences. And as a result of that, it doesn't know what it wants. So it can, that can happen to INTJs. It's just, it's not as often. It depends like her age group. It depends her nurture as well. Uh, how much she's experienced, how immature she is, how developed she is, etc. But uh, usually they know what they want and they have some kind of plan, and sometimes they don't based on the circumstances of their life. Um, so that's just one issue, so be aware of that. Okay. Sweet. All right, next question. Okay, this guy's basically posting a Hitler video, and he's asking if Hitler uses NI or any. Uh, not answering that question. Next. Yeah. Let's just say Hitler uses both. <laughs> um, why do you think there are more senses born into the population than intuitives? Or why are there more senses in the population than intuitives? I would like you to state your reasons why I think this, why you think this is the case. All right. Let's look at this here. All right, so you have NFs, you have NTs, you have SPs, and you have SJs, okay? 40% of the population, 30%, 15%, 15%, okay? So S's make up 70% of the population. And then intuitives make up 30% of the population of the entire planet, right? Sensors, guess what, are statistically resistant to change. Okay. Overall, they are resistant to change with SJs being the most resistant to change. And because of that resistance to change, because they live in reality, they do not necessarily care about possibilities, which is possible goes up here with the intuitives. Uh, the reason why, uh, so there's more of them. Why is that necessary? It really comes down to the survival of the species. So our psyches are developed such that our species will survive the harsh environment of the earth. It's that, that simple, basically. And in order for our race to move forward, and up here, on the very tip of this little pyramid, you have the NI heroes leading the way, etc. Right? But yeah, that's uh, that's where it comes from. Perfect. All right, Jab. I think that's uh, that's it for questions this evening. Unless there's one really burning mm -hmm. question before we go. And there's one fall down, but I guess we can skip to it because All this right, let's guy. Do it. I have a soft spot for people becoming fathers. So I'm going to skip past three questions to get to his. And we're just going to do his really quickly. All right. All right. So this guy says, 
I'm a 21 year old INTP male expecting to have a fa- expecting to have a daughter in two months. Any advice on how to prepare for being a better father? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, read no more, Mister Nice Guy, as soon as possible. Uh, read uh, Codependent no more. Um, Twelve rules for life as well. And uh, Codependent. Uh, no more. Uh, also, as an INTP, you will want to read a book by the name of Big Magic as well, by the same author who wrote Eat, Pray, Love. Uh, read Big Magic. And then uh, make sure that you are allowing your child to fail. You need to allow failure and then ask your child if they want your help or not. And uh, that way you're not going to TE Nemesis stomp your child basically when they fail. Uh, you want to keep it in the FE land and be all as supportive as possible. Supportive, supportive, supportive. And then by helping, you become TI smarter, more intelligent, more capable. Yeah. That's how I'd answer that question. Congratulations on the child, champ. Congratulations. Uh, so which means that that child will probably be born within the next two weeks based on the timing of the question. So anyway, yeah. folks, uh, that's it for this evening. Uh, glad that you all made it. Uh, we will be back. I think we'll be back next week. We're not sure because I'll be traveling to Atlanta. So be aware of that. Uh, if you guys uh, just keep your questions coming. Uh, Jab, do you have any closing remarks for us? Um, yeah, maybe over the next couple of days I might do a community event or I might just like come in and be like hey let's type some fictional characters just in the discord or something just something fun casual nothing too serious awesome uh, yeah so if anyone wants to hang out with me sometime over the next couple of days uh i might send a ping out about that amazing yeah we can definitely amazing. do that. and another point uh i need to plug my article for the 10th time so yeah, we have never really not plug the article for the tenth time. We, we have a good article coming out on the website. Remember, csjoseph.life. If you go there, you click recent, you're going to be able to see the recent articles. We've had some really good recent articles coming out. Um, some really good blog posts. Don't forget, there's ten. You know, there's a really good one about INTJs. The ENTJ one was very popular. All the intuitive ones have gotten over a hundred shares. I think some of them have gotten over two hundred shares. Feel free wow. to keep sharing them even more. Um. Yeah, they're really good. Don't forget to visit the website. And uh, if you want to look at any books which you think Chase would recommend, there's also the store tab. We actually... you don't We don't actually profit off... Well, we kind of do. So the way that works is you buy it from Amazon, and because we linked you to Amazon, we get an affiliate share of money. So it actually doesn't cost you any extra money. So yep. if you buy the uh, books through our website... It's a mutual beneficial relationship. So remember, uh, csjoseph.life, click the store. Nice list of books. You can see what Chase is reading. You can see the books which Chase recommends. Also, the next Patreon private lecture that will be released will be the seventh golden pair, which is ENTP INTJ relationships. That right. is the next golden pair. And don't forget, um, INFJs versus INTJs. Remember that came out earlier, just before this this stream started. I think ten minutes before the stream started, that came out. Um, and any other announcements we need to make? No, I think. Oh yeah, the Game of Thrones. It. Oh yeah, the Game should of Thrones we stream. Should we officially schedule that? Lock that in the time? I think I think it already is scheduled. I think it's Friday night at nine Eastern. Last I checked, so like tomorrow so night t- actually. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, 9 Eastern, so that would be like... Game of Thrones typing, guys. Game of Thrones, where we will be typing your favorite Game of Thrones characters using the standard how-to-type methodology that we've been doing before. It would be a special event. In approximately 22 hours, is that correct? Yep, that's correct. In approximately 22 hours from now, we will be doing the Game of Thrones typing stream. I mean, yeah, good Friday. Hopefully some of you guys have the day off or something. Yes, and make sure you guys eat yourself a meat grinder's pizza. <laughs> My mom would kill you for saying that. <laughs> what? Eating meat on Good Friday? Yep. That's okay. <laughs> meat grinder's pizza. I will probably have vegan pho. Vegan pho. Sponsored by Meat Grinder's Pizza. I wish. 
<laughs> I had vegan pho last night, so it was pretty awesome. All right, folks, uh, glad to have you all. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you guys uh, next time uh, for our next live stream. We'll uh, see you in 22 you hours. See you in 22 hours. So with that being said, you folks have a good night. See you then. Later. See you later. later.